What does the world look like in 2025? Uh, you know, it's probably no, no surprise that online social media tools, the same kinds that facilitated the Arab Spring in 2011, probably not going to be that simple again. Right? It's not difficult for governments to track the very same social media tools for the purposes of identifying people that use social media. They might even find a ways to seed the social media to stimulate certain responses. I believe in, uh, in, in just in Syria last week, it happened after we wrote the scenario, but U.S. and French government officials visited a group of Syrian protesters showing their support for the regime, and within a few hours, using social media, a group of pro-governmental uh, activists ended up burning the, the U.S. Embassy and French Embassy. So that was stimulated by the very same tools that motivated the protesters in the beginning with. So governments are not going to go to sleep on social media. They'll learn how to use it for their own purposes as well as to track the people that do use it against their interests. I think online content blocking is going to go global. There's a pretty good chance the U.S. Congress in, in, in this year will pass the Protect IP Act, which is about protecting intellectual property, trademarks, and software content. But it's, it also plays right into the notion of being able to block users' access to that kind of content if it's, if it's uh, responsible for copyright infringement. It's also the same way you would block content that's critical of a government or content that might fall foul of a censor's eye because of moral or public order type objections. Governments, I think, will be called upon by 2025 to scan all internet traffic for malware. In this scenario, we're saying it's plausible that people will lose confidence in just subscribing to monthly downloads from the virus tracking software we all use. Not all of us work for a big company like VeriSign, where the, the IT department is constantly scanning Pam's computer. What, what if everyone just says, I've had it. The Configure virus has taken the world by storm and caused billions of dollars in credit card fraud, and what did I have it in the year 2020 or so? Then uh, that's it. The government needs to scan all the traffic. And by golly, the government could do that. With deep packet inspection, it could ex take a look at every packet that travels over the internet. No more drive-by downloads that aren't going to be scanned. And there are a lot of folks who feel like that's a good idea. I see a few heads nodding around the room. Let the government protect us. No, there's a head that's nodding. No, that's great. That's what I want to hear about. <laughs> GPS is, uh, it, it turns out that in, in some of these disasters, some of the only way that people can be saved and rescued is by use of a GPS or a transponder that uh, to, indicates their location to rescue authorities. Well, what, what if the scenario came true that we wrote about in here where the government mandates that every smartphone have a GPS transponder and that it not be deactivatable? Because if it's deactivated, there'd be an opportunity that people would not be able to be found. And the public might go along with that. They've seen enough media stories of people being rescued from a flood because the GPS transponder showed where they were. Um, it's also going to help the governments to track where you are when disasters aren't occurring to me. Global climate control. These uh, natural disasters, to the extent they're motivated by crazy weather patterns and potentially global warming, we say, in the end, the end, of, the, uh, the end of the decade, would generate, finally, the straw that breaks the camel's back, the tipping point that drives citizens, industry, and governments to say, let's take collective action in a strong way to reduce global warming, emissions of greenhouse gases, thermal pollution. And if that's the case, how does that impact the internet? Well, what we suggested in our scenario is that by then your, your smartphones are going to have the ability to do thermal imaging as well as gas um, spect uh, chromatographs that can pick up carbon dioxide emissions. So if, um, if I see a car that looks like it's emitting a little too much, I pull out my smartphone, snap, snap a thermal image as well as a carbon dioxide image. It's already got my GPS location. I'll take a photograph of the license plate on this truck and hit the send button, so I submit it to the online Earth Save snitch line so that that company that runs that vehicle or the owner of that vehicle is going to get a citation. Because after all, our nation has committed to reduce emissions levels and thermal pollution by X percent in two more years. That's an example of the kind of thing where, not vigilante, but individual action can be facilitated by a phenomenally connected world where the devices we hold in our hands are so powerful and it isn't a stretch at all to think about uh, thermal imaging or infrared imaging to go along with everything else we can do with our smartphones today. Local governments going online and consolidating. The austerity measures induced by a lot of governments that have borrowed beyond their means and spent beyond their means means that uh, government's going to need to get a lot more lean and mean. It's like Lee said, uh, someone said this morning, where 
hardly any of us do a banking inside of a bank. We do more and more of it online because the banks find that that's more efficient. That's how they save money and they drive us to be online. The governments are going to continue to drive people to do more and more and more things online. To where by 2025, let's suppose the governments are as efficient as a lot of private sector institutions and you really don't get to talk to a human. You know, it's always voice response. If you should do something crazy like pick up the phone, most government will be e-government. Uh, there'll be fewer and fewer employees and more and more interactive services. And we also predicted in our scenario that local governments, the towns, villages, boroughs, and even counties that we're all so familiar with become a relic of history. They're simply too small. They're not necessary anymore with an interconnected world. So those, those village and, and local government entities really consolidate into larger regional entities. And that consolidation and interaction and online agent goes right up the chain to where state governments cooperate more and more, especially when it comes to reacting to disasters. And up the top of the chain, governments interact more and more and cooperate with each other in handling disasters and preparing for the next one.